Uh, Nate, good morning to you. Pull your mic a little closer to you, if you don't mind, sir. Yeah, good, good morning. Here. Good morning. Uh, Nate is here in his capacity as an active shooter trainer uh, at uh, some point. Uh, Nate, of course, obviously former sheriff of Berkeley County, and we had uh, Nate on to discuss that uh, last week on the program here. So anyway, Nate, uh, any comments on your travel in in terms of roads uh, or any hazards encountered? No, it was safe. I, I mean, one thing we got to definitely got to watch out for is standing water. I mean, you can't drive your average speeds uh, on these kind of roads as you would dry roads. So be be wary of that. Be mindful of that. Get your eyes up. Look ahead of you and make sure you stay away from that so to avoid hydroplaning and whatnot. I had uh, my alert Berkeley texts were going off like crazy yesterday. And whenever there's any sort, sort of weather situation, and some, most of those are always centered around I-81, uh, but because of water, those were – Yesterday, more so on some of the side roads. I think. Well, and I said off off the air, I was en route to eighty one uh, to eighty one to Winchester yesterday for an eight thirty meeting, and I hopped on eighty one about five of eight, ten of eight, and I was like, "Whoa!" Well, first, getting through the city was sort of dicey, but. I don't think people realized that temperature just at 35, 36 um, mm-hmm. was, uh, was enough to make things kind of treacherous. And I saw two accidents, fortunately, mm-hmm. um, didn't look to be serious and didn't shut down either direction of 81, which is also... Um, you know, a blessing. <laughs> well, there's, that happens you know, all the time. there's air temperature and then there's ground temperature. Right. So you have to, you have to be aware of both of those two. Uh, Bill, you mentioned this as well, because I got a text from Kathy Cloud asking uh, about where to go to find uh, those who've registered in the city for uh, primary and general elections and, and some of the local races. Uh, we know from Mac Warner's site, you can easily get to the state level uh, races and whatever, but uh, have you found any luck finding the locals? No, I was going to mention on air to Tony Petrucci. Tony, if you're listening, how about posting who's filed? Uh, we For the statewide offices, you're right. You can go to uh, uh, Secretary of State. Uh, on the county side, I've not been able to find a good access. I've heard rumors of various people filing. Uh, there there's a list of individuals that pre-filed, but that's no longer valid as of yesterday or the day before. It's those people that have actually filed. So uh, it may exist somewhere, but I've not been able to find it. I hope Tony will will publish it for us. And uh, Nate, you pre-filed to run for sheriff. Will you be filing to uh, actually fi- formally filing to run for sheriff? Uh, yeah, it's... Uh or any other uh, office for that matter. Well, <laughs> I don't. Uh, my wife and I are talking about uh, my political career. Uh, there's a lot I have to do, mm-hmm. a lot I want to do. Uh, my whole life's been involved with public safety and emergency preparedness, and um, short of my private business, we're we're looking at all options. Um, and uh, if that if something's going to come to fruition, it'll come to fruition within the next two weeks. So let's talk. We had a school shooting mm-hmm. last week. Uh, while you were sheriff, we talked to you frequently during school shootings because you had uh, uh, attempted to uh, get the schools to make some changes. I think you were successful in that as that process went along. Uh, part of your uh, private uh, work that you do involves active sh- uh, shooter training in terms of what uh, the reaction should be. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about these most recent shootings and any advice you'd give to those of us who get caught up in a situation like that? Well, I, I think... Uh First and foremost, um, if you look at statistics, you'll see an overwhelming amount of support in terms of uh, preventable um, incidents where things have been either said or certain uh, activities uh, were, or let's just say concerning behaviors were known well before the incident. And I think that as a school, as a parent, uh, collectively, as a community, we really need to support and um, be behind these preventable measures. You know, the see something, say something, see something, text something, um, anti-bullying initiatives, which I've been a part of uh, here at War Memorial Park uh, on a, uh, each and every year. Uh, I think there's more to do on that end of it. Uh, you know, our teachers are overwhelmed. They have many hats they have to wear currently. Uh, they are definitely understaffed uh, and overworked. Um, I envision something more along the lines of a handle with care type of program that I took part in uh, down in Charleston, whereas, you know, kids express being bullied, then um, they, uh, the administration really needs to look at that 
uh, and uh, they'll often find that it's not the first incident. It might be the first time they've come out with it. But mm-hmm. you know, when, a, when a student makes that first step, um, because they think their mind runs the gamut of, I don't want to be a tattletale. I don't want to, uh, you know, provoke more bullying. So uh, with that said, you know, it's, it's a hard step for a young mind to take that initiative to tell somebody. And that educator, that counselor, whoever it's spoken to, that friend needs to really understand the, the next steps, the processes that are involved with that, and take them seriously, maybe even provide alternate learning atmospheres for those, for the person that does express that. So we have a, a chance to analyze the situation a lot better and, um, you know, initiate no contact orders internally. They have those in the schools, especially when there's physical altercations in the schools. I would advocate for that and uh, continuously educate internally, not only the students, but the parents. And the parents need to be really involved. I mean, we see a lot of criminal activity along with these other issues, uh, like Perry High School, where uh, you know parents need to be involved more. I mean, I believe the sisters of the perpetrator um, were very upset and um, they were trying to help the, uh, their brother, but unfortunately their their brother was deeper in the rabbit hole in, in terms of bullying than uh, more than what they their own family members suspected. So we have the counselor services there at the school. We have alternate learning atmospheres there in the school. We're not doing or recreating the wheel or anything. It's just basically a handle with care uh initiative add-on if you will and that's that's something i'm a huge advocate of bill yeah uh good morning nate uh, morning. the uh, uh summit point provides resources <clears throat> other probably provide resources as well uh from the from the sheriff's department uh specifically uh what is the basic training that you do obviously you do uh, firearm training you do uh, driving training emergency driving uh is there any other major thing first aid i assume you would do what what do you do uh from the sheriff's perspective that you ensure your employees have the most up-to-date training well yeah so we've done quite a bit actually uh we've participated in stop the bleed initiative uh we actually purchased Jacob. Let's, say, let's stop the bleed say what what is that please that is a initiative uh provided by the local emergency planning uh, committee that I'm a part of. Uh, there's literature on the last I looked second floor of the Dunn building, uh, but we took it a step further because Jacob Hall was a young boy uh, and uh, in an elementary school in South Carolina and unfortunately succumbed to a gunshot wound to his leg. Uh, and, and subsequently passed in the hospital okay. from massive bleeding. So every one of our deputies, I've equipped them with stop the bleed kits. They're okay. highly visible. They don't say stop the bleed on them, but they say Jacob Hall. Okay. North American Rescue partnered with this initiative, and I partnered with um, Daniel Byrne, a captain in the fire department down there in uh, South Carolina. And, um, you know, so he and I are, know each other rather well. He's super excited that we took on this, uh, helped with this initiative. But it's so important because that particular incident, the, the um, teacher that picked up Jacob and took him inside the building to protect him because it was an exterior threat. Everyone was on the playground. Um, she, they had the uh, uh, training, but they didn't have the equipment. And when I look deeper into that, it's, that's generally the bridge we got to uh, cross uh, where, you know, it's great to have this training, but we don't have the equipment to back it up or vice versa. We got this equipment. What do I do with it? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and doing that uh, in phases and uh, providing that training and making sure that uh, that's something that needs to be revisited annually. I, I interrupted you. you talking about stop the bleed. What other training do you do? You do? Oh, we uh, send our school resource officers to a willing uh, West Virginia uh, annual school resource officer uh, course that uh, promotes the socializing with the kids, establishing uh, trusted relationships with the kids. Uh, and, and I've gotten many comments from school resource officers that the the children and once that rapport has been established that they're your best source of information and and being able to know kids at that level may be their first step of talking about bullying is to that sro um so we've we've been uh through um i think we trained 
uh, without any charge whatsoever, 10 uh, Beacon instructors. Uh, three of those 10 were the school resource officers, so they're okay, allowed to go again. ahead and... Okay, interrupt again. Mm -hmm. Beacon instructor, what do you mean? The Beacon stands for Barricade Egress Control, Oppose, and Notify. It is a program that I built while I was at the training center. Uh, I'm very proud of it. It was nationally certified three times over through IDLIS, the International Association of Directors for Law Enforcement Standards and Training. And uh, basically, the training center has given me uh, the liberty to be able to um, teach this course uh, free of charge what's, uh, and uh, no compensation to the training center and myself. So we can actually make sure that our school system, our educators, our officers are trained at a level uh, that that is relevant and practical with today's society. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm missing something. What does Beacon do specifically? It's a series of non uh, uh, non sequential strategies that one can apply in an emergency situation. But that center uh, letter abbreviation control we go into discussing preventative measures, uh, pre incident. Uh, control measures during incident and post incident uh, measures from an administrative standpoint that they can apply to and this goes to workplaces places of worship okay. hospitals and schools so uh, and workplace so uh, it's it's very tailorable to an hour two hours four hours eight hours six hours it depends on what the individual audience needs and what they have time for but training those instructors was a blessing because they go out and they can teach um, that 30 minute session during a planning period for the school you know we have one of the largest elementary schools in the state hedgesville elementary and uh you know unfortunately we're seeing a lot of instances involving uh the younger uh, uh kids in schools elementaries or, or intermediate schools so educating those staff members are, is hugely important and um so we were a big advocate of that and and that's one of the trainings that we took place that that and we did the actual uh, first ever in Berkeley County full-scale uh, emergency preparedness exercise down in Inwood um, last year, July 27th. No, this year, July 27th. Yeah. Uh, for firearm training and also uh, driving training, uh, you get you got get some of them at Summit Point. Are there other facilities available as well, especially for firearm training? Uh, you can get firearms training from, uh, which we've done with uh, Shadowhawk, with Peacemakers. Um, actually, Shadowhawk taught our level one, level two tactics training. Um, Peacemaker, uh, they're more of a privatized uh, firearms range. Uh, but I, I, I will say, hands down, uh, Lynn Weekly and Randy Weekly, it's a family owned business. Now we're talking about where now? Shadowhawk down Shadow, there okay. at, at Back Creek Valley. Okay. Yeah, so it's. Mm -hmm. It's literally five minutes from the top of the mountain sure. there, um, 911 for, or 911, uh, 45 and 51, top of the mountain in Jaredstown. Great people, great family-owned business, and obviously I'm a huge supporter of supporting local business, but uh, they've provided hands-down great, great training. <clears throat> they actually offer competitions during the weekend. Maria. Full disclosure, um, Nate actually did a training session out at hospice um, before – you were sheriff if if the timing mm -hmm. situation um uh is clear in my mind which it may not be but um and it's a very good training yeah. i mean it was but i have to say it's also very emotional because mm -hmm. you know you put yourself in that situation mm -hmm. what happens if so my question is did when you um were doing these trainings through the sheriff's department to the school system um was did you actually go in and and do those trainings for school staff here in berkeley county yeah so going back to the full-scale exercise we did in july um the educators actually played our, our role okay our, they were our role players if you will mm -hmm. so we had site uh, managers that there were there that kept within a certain parameter of, within a eight different scenarios mm -hmm. a lot of involved EMS, a lot of them involved one to two officers, a lot of them involved um, up to six officers. Mm -hmm. uh, proudly, uh, we saw a participation from the tri-state area in terms of law enforcement, but once they were done doing that role-playing in the morning, 
we transitioned to a classroom setting because a lot of the times what I've seen, uh, the feedback and evaluations was, especially from educators, well, we want to see this in our environment. We want to do this. We don't want to go to a canned sure. uh, setting that's not conducive to what our environment is. We wanted to do it in the classroom. So uh, myself and Eric Neely, uh, we went and we trained all the educators. I think there was 33 uh, without uh, including the uh, other businesses like P&G and, and other folks that uh, wanted to um, be an observer in this. We had several companies that wanted to observe, but we had several planning sessions leading up to this. But the educators got a two-hour uh, emergency preparedness session that involved hands-on practical applications. And, and like you said, in this course we do, uh, if – uh, the audience approves of it. Uh, mm -hmm. We do a what we call a shot exposure. Uh, we shoot munitions in front of them, obviously blank, in front of them, a wall away, and then around the building, and we call it directional exposure to make sure that they understand what that sounds like and, and um, what to do in situations like that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, going uh, going back to Summit Point, one of the um, one of the reasons that we the 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 county filed a petition was directing a lot of business towards Summit Point. So what I'm trying to ferret out, Nate, is what what's the, what does Summit Point provide that we cannot get other places? And uh, we you mentioned uh, farm training. There are several places you can get farm training. What about driving education? Well, the, the shame about the person that authored that petition. Uh, to my knowledge, uh, and every class that I've put on has never once attended one of them. And that's a shame because she speaks ill upon a proactive training regimen, uh, whereas I've done more training in one year than my predecessor done in all four. And the $500 that he spent was on a deputy that was already three to four accidents involved but prior to that deputy being sent to the training center. And that's the last part of it. Now, as far as the, the, the training, uh, I can send them, and I did this research. You can go to Pantera, but Pantera doesn't uh, is not. Where, where's Pantera? Uh, I think it's like Moorfield, okay. Moorfield okay. area, mm -hmm. but it's uh, – there's some uh, administrative issues, some manager managerial issues. Okay. Uh, other places are like Pennsylvania, um, uh, the Pennsylvania State Police. That's where we did our pit training. Uh, what is pit training? That's the precision intervention technique. Uh, I called it a public safety mobilization technique is what we have we built that it's policy. a lot of acronyms Nate. it is it is so but but <laughs> the best part um it, it, here's here's what you look at does the training center offer lodging and where's that lodging at does it, um, how far away is it do the officers get to come home and see their family at night um, and what does that uh, training center offer in terms of hands-on practical relative training? When you look at training, especially from a leadership standpoint, you got to look at is this 80% PowerPoint or is it and 20% hands-on or vice versa? Obviously, the muscle memory is established through hands-on practical application and repetition. I so. don't even remember any PowerPoint when you did the training exactly. at hospice. I it, mean, we were out there. That's the concept of the training center. And I'd love to sit here and say that what better way to uh, know uh, in firsthand information on the quality and spirit behind the, the training curricula that this training center develops. So as a training center, you look at um, where do I send them? How much is it going to cost taxpayers? Do they get to go home and see their families every night? And what's the relativity and uh, uh, practicality of the training that is that we're uh, looking at? So I've literally just using a facility 25 minutes down the road uh our folks go home and get to see their families every single night even on a week-long course i sent our swat team to alderson to pft and no, uh, pft I, uh, precision firearms training <laughs> okay. okay um and, and that cost me thirteen thousand dollars roughly and that's not even including per diem overtime and whatnot so that that's not an overnight drive they had to stay down there all week uh and, and it, I would make that investment in a team that needs to have that kind of advanced training and a different look for that matter. Because what I love about the Summit Point training facility is they actually, and they do this with Jefferson County, they do this with Martinsburg City PD, they give them venues for free. 
matter of fact, when I was standing in front of the commission arguing uh, the petition that very day, the Seven Point Training Facility uh, gave uh, our deputies and our firearms instructors a flat range free of charge for our annual firearm certifications. We get to keep consumable vehicles up there in their lot marked with our name on them through our relationships with different salvage places so we can actually use those vehicles for pit training uh, and, and we have and I've actually taken the commissioners and the county administrator up there to the training center and 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 showed them what this 857 acre facility actually has to offer if it's 25 minutes down the road I, I there's just really no argument. Uh, Nate, I have some sense, and I'm, I have very little familiarity with the uh, with training, what the sheriff does. I have some sense what firearm training would be. Mm -hmm. I do not have any sense at all what driving training would be. Mm -hmm. I, is it uh, preventative? Is it trying to... Evasive? Uh, evasive is trying to contact to uh, uh, explain very quickly what w the objectives of the driver training. It's about knowing uh, and understanding in a more deeper sense, uh, in the weeds, if you will, the fundamentals of driving, which is there's three, st there's three inputs that we put in this vehicle, and that is uh, steering brake gas. Okay. Okay. Each say that again. Steering, brake, and gas. Okay. All right. So each one of those inputs, what you'll find is if I get into a front wheel skid of the car, then I need to understand what that feels like with the car because actually the car, there's vehicle language that you as the driver can feel. Um, if I've put in way too much steering input, I can cause that front wheel skid, especially on roads like this. Um, if I'm uh, going into a turn too fast, I can cause a front wheel skid. So uh, teaching folks, even your more novice drivers, uh, which I do, it, it, because sometimes parents don't have the luxury of 55 hours uh, to donate to their kids and teaching them, but kid, we're all reactionary. If the car doesn't do what I want it to do, I have a tendency to overreact, which means if my car is going straight but I need to go to the left, I'll steer more left. And unknowingly, we don't realize that we just need to bring our feet off the pedals, allow that steering to regain. We've exceeded the availability of the traction. So in the driver's training, with actually the Summit Point Training Center has a certified law enforcement accident avoidance course, which I advocated in my campaign, which was the $64,000 that was noted in the, in the petition, which makes no sense. But... Um, they, I have had deputies send me emails saying what that done for them in terms of saving them from hitting innocent people in, in pursuits and whatnot. Matter of fact, the shooting that happened last November, where one of our deputies had to ram uh, a, a vehicle, and because the individual was actively shooting at us, uh, Deputy Azell made a comment in terms of how beneficial that training was when he was taking turns you watch that video and i please do it for you on it but you watch that video and for the jump start that this individual had on deputy azell and for deputy azell to race around the old mall area and all those turns it's phenomenal to watch this individual drive and be able to catch up with a guy who had a jump on him i mean azell was out of his car so imagine him taking off the suspect and Azell having to run back to his car, get in the car, and how much of a, uh, a head start there. It was a, it was phenomenal to watch. It was a very proudful moment for me. Yeah, I Bill, we're just about out of time, so wrap it up. Okay, the evasive part. I see. I we all uh, go back to the O.J. Simpson chase that we had, where we actually made contact with the car. Mm -hmm. Is that part of the training as well? I, I don't know what the the purpose. Well, so the public safety precision intervention technique i'm proud to say was actually utilized in a pursuit from maryland into west virginia and uh, utilized by someone that was certified and trained in that maneuver and it ended the pursuit we've we've done stop sticks on vehicles it's deflated tires but more officers have been killed doing that technique and there's absolutely no statistics supporting the death of an officer in this Okay. Uh, Nate, thank you very much for coming in. You're very welcome. Hey, just uh, keep your head on a swivel uh, and be aware. Parents, get involved with your kids.